Hey, even if you are into Flutter, you should watch this video. Namaste everyone, in today's video episode, we are going to create the demo app that is auto-generated whenever you create any new Flutter project. Which is actually a counter app, you click on a button and the counter gets incremented. Hey, please don't go away, as we are going to demonstrate the Flutter-like state management in Android using Kotlin and MVRX. If you are not familiar with Flutter, that's okay. You must have heard of it at least. And if you already know Flutter, you know that how cool it is. Anyways, those who are not familiar with Flutter, then you just know that they have something called stateful widget. And it works like this. If you change any variable which is being used in the UI, the UI gets automatically updated. We don't need to write set text or set image after every change. And it is possible in Android. I'm in Kotlin without any boilerplates. So let's code this. Okay, I have already created a Flutter project for you. This is all dirt. So many comments. Let's uh, do some cleanup here. Okay, it looks much cleaner. Let's run and check the app. And there we go. This is the app that we are going to recreate today. It is pretty simple. You click on this fab and the counter will increment. So let's quickly create a new project in Android Studio. While the project is being created, let's check what MVRX is. So this is the GitHub repository of MVRX and it is developed by Airbnb. As you can see, it contains some new commits. This library is pretty new actually. And the version 1.0 is released recently. So we need to install the dependency in our project. And this is the line that we need to add to our build.gradle. So build.gradle is, is like the popspack.yml file which manages the dependency for you for especially in the flutter project okay so let's copy and add this line and the version will be 1.0.0 Great, sync now. So let's create a fragment now. Think of it like a new screen which we are going to glue it to our activity. As the fragment is created, you can see that this is the line which is going to be responsible for inflating or rendering the layout or design into a mobile device. Okay, so add the fragment to our main activity. It has this floating action button and some text in the middle and app bar or action bar sort of things on top. We don't need to think about adding this app bar ourselves as we have this theme set in Android manifest which basically maintains the bar on top. Okay, let's run now and see how, how our basic app looks. Hmm, it looks green because of this primary color. Let's go back to the Flutter project and find out which color they are using. Okay. They are using some blue color. Let's check the hex code. Mm, so many hex code, but we are interested in this. Blue primary value. Let's copy and paste this to our color primary. Okay. 
Actually, let's change every color to this. And for color primary duck, choose a dark variant. This will actually manage the color of this portion. Okay, let's run and check if everything's all right. Okay, great. The color looks similar to the Flutter app. Now let's go back to the fragment layout and quickly make the same design as our Flutter app. So now the design is done. Let's run the app and check how it looks. Hmm, pretty awesome. So try to write some code which is going to make our feature possible. Overwrite the method on view created in our fragment. Use a click listener on our fab. We can directly use fab because of this synthetic extension in Kotlin. Okay, let's take a variable count above and initialize it to zero. And every time the button is clicked, we are going to update the text with the count. So this is pure string interpolation that we can do inside dirt as well. Okay, let's run and check to see if it works or not. And it looks like it works. Let's go back to the flutter project. They have this stateful widget and a state. Inside that, the counter is getting incremented. And this is the floating action button, which has this on pressed parameter, which takes this increment counter method. And this method calls the set state and increments the counter. And if the counter is modified, the build method gets called again, that in turn shows the updated counter to the UI. Okay, now that we understand what's going on, let's go back to our project and add a state on top. This is going to be data class, which is nothing but contains the getters, setters, hash code, everything without writing any boilerplates. Yeah, Kotlin is cool. <laughs> so this is going to contain the count variable and initialize, initially set the count to zero. And it is going to extend MVRX state. Let's create one more class, which is going to be our view model. If you are familiar with new architecture components, you must know that what a view model is. Even if you have no idea, that's okay. Just follow me along. So this extends to base MV RX view model, which is a bounded generic. So it accepts only MV RX state. In this case, we are going to pass our main fragment state, which is nothing but a MV RX state. And in the constructor, also it takes a MV RX state.
So I'm going to pass the main fragment state and we need to pass debug mode. Let's pass this as false for now. Okay, great. Now let's go back to the Flutter project and check what happens. Hmm, on press of fab, it calls the increment counter. Great, let's write increment counter method in our view model. And we need to somehow call it from here. For this, we need an instance of view model. So let's declare view model somewhere in here. Main fragment view model takes an instance of main fragment state and we don't need to pass the in the value of counter as it has the default value of 0. So we need to set the updated count somehow in the text view whenever the increment count method is called. Because it extends base MVRX view model, we have access to the method called set state. So set state here takes a reducer. As per the MVRX creators, if you are familiar with React and Redux, then you will get it. I'm not familiar with React, so all I can see here is that it takes a function which receives and return the same type of object. And the S here is nothing but a MVRX state that you have previously seen. Okay, so we have full access to our main fragment state in here. So what we are going to do is copy the state with a different count, which is current states count plus one. We can simplify this further. Let's remove this dot and all the braces. Hmm, looks much better. Okay, now we need to add one more method so that whenever the state changes, our text view updates. For that, call with stat method here. As you can see, it takes a view model, actually more than one view model. And it also returns the state associated with that view model, which is in our case, main fragment state. Okay, great. Let's copy and paste the text view here. And as we get the state here, we can access the count. So what happens here, whenever we click on the fab, it invokes the increment count and set the state here, which is nothing but a copy of the current state, which count is incremented by one. And we expect that which state is going to return state every time the state has been changed so that our text view gets updated. Great, let's run. Finally, I switched to Jenny motion as I was facing some problems with other emulator. Okay, let's uh, hit the plus button and nothing happens. There's one more step required, which is uh, we need to extend to view a base MVRX fragment. And override the function called invalidate. And here, change the view model implementation a bit. Instead of uh, initializing the view model ourselves, we are going to use a helper method. As the on view created is called, even after screen rotation, we don't want to create a new view model instance every time. Mm, 
one more step is left there. Just copy and paste the width state method here inside the invalidate. Great, let's run. Click on the plus button and there we go, it increments. Let's do one more test. Rotate the screen. And voila, our data remains the same. We didn't need to add anything inside the bundle and restore it. Just like Flutter, we didn't need to add any additional co code to maintain the configuration change. Okay, before you go, I have a challenge for you to write an app using MVRX and announce it on Instagram or Twitter using hashtag Android challenge. And don't forget to mention at Android. I'll feature the first three participants on all our social pages. This app can be as simple as a dummy login screen or as complex as Instagram. It's up to you. If you want to learn more about MVRX, then you can watch the video series of MVRX Fundamentals on caster.io. This course is made by Gabriel Pill, the creator of MVRX, I guess. I'll put the links on the description of this video. And MVRX is based on RX Java. And if you want to learn anything, actually everything about RX Java, we've got an ongoing series for that, where we upload bite-sized episodes of RX Java every week. The link is on the card in the description of this video. So if you have any doubt regarding today's video, then you can discuss me with the, in the comments below or any of my social handles. As I am also new to MVRX and if you liked this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button because it motivates me to create great contents in future. So it's me here signing off. Thank you for stopping by. See you later.